once again from the Gateshead Garden Festival for round two of the World Strength Athlete Championships. Let me remind you that this is a competition of 16 events designed to test just about every muscle in the body. And our competitors are competing for the Trebor Super Strength Trophy. Before we go any further, let's meet the competitors again. There are four teams, two men in each team. And last, the mighty Americans, Bill Kazmaier, three times world's strongest man. And Odie Wilson, known as the Nightmare, the world's strongest man, runner-up, 1990. Any side of the pole? First today, the Pole Heave, a team event which takes something from sumo wrestling, but the protagonists are separated by a battering ram. The aim is simple, to get the other team out of the pit or on the floor. This one should favor the heavier teams, but the lighter men are hoping they can use their opponent's extra power to their own advantage. Each contest is decided over three rounds, and the British are already one love down. Whatever the British team tried to do, it was to no avail. The power of the Americans left them with no place to go. For the British, 150 pounds deficit too much to overcome, but the Icelanders still thought they had a chance against the Europeans. So uh, we will uh, use a different technique. The Americans and the Dutch boys, they were trying to use their body weight and kind of force or straight, I believe. But uh, we will try to use some tricks, a lot of speed, and move around in the area and try to push them on the ass with some tricks. The weight difference between the Icelanders and the European team is just 50 pounds, but that proved decisive in round one, so the Icelanders need this one to stay alive. Ready? Charlie Vanderbosch proving that neat footwork can turn the tables. European team taking a lesson from the Icelanders. It looked as if they got the heave on there, but now the Europeans under pressure. And Arneson and Magnuson level it up at one all. Ready, Iceland? Europe? Yeah. Ready? And the Europeans getting the press on right from the start. No chance for the Icelanders that time. Pick up the pole. So in the final, the Americans versus the Europeans. The big teams winning out in the heats in the end. And the Americans placing one man on either Ready? side of the pole, just trying to make sure that they can keep control of it. And it works beautifully. Charlie Vanderbosch and Ted Van der Parra try to spin it, but there's nowhere to go. You ready? Yeah. So the second he. Charlie spinning around yet again. He gets O.D. out of the ring, but he's on the floor. 2-0 to the Americans. O.D., got all the power to bear in that one? Yeah. See, Charlie's a, Charlie's a technician. He knows the tricks and the trades, so my strategy was to key off him and Bill was just a part of power. So, But he did manage to throw me out the ring. <laughs> And in the playoff for third and fourth place, the British team are already leading 1-0. Yes, 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 yes. And they get the drive just right a second time to take third place. Come in. 
And the point's the same for every event. 10, 8, 6, 4. Today's first individual event is something everybody who's done any strength training will be familiar with, albeit with far lighter weights. Dumbbell press, 200 pounds, 100 pounds in each hand. First to go on deck, Great Britain. Adrian Smith, having injured his left bicep on day one, needs the weights Begin. lifted into position. The time one, limit is one two, minute, and he is permitted three, to stop and restart. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, yeah, come on, fourteen, come on, yeah. fifteen, yeah, come on, sixteen. Yeah. Rest. He calls for a rest to try rest. and get oxygen into those muscles, and he must lock out on every Three lift for it to left. count. If he doesn't do that, the referee Jeff Capes will just Step repeat back. the Begin. count at the 16. same number. 17, 18, 19, 20. Rest. Five seconds. Stop. And before he's got a chance to add to the 20 total, the hooter goes and the one minute is up. Next to go, Helti Arneson from Iceland. A little more of the psyching up Icelandic style. Get ready. Whistle start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19. Arneson, a power lifter, leaning back to make the lift very much like the bench 20, press in that sport. 21, 22, 23. 24, 25. Locks out at 25 to take the lead. Helti Arneson feeling the benefit of those four hours a day training which he does all through the winter. Ted Vandenpera for Europe. Get and those ready. long arms, which were such an advantage in the brick lift on day one, are now one. a liability. He has Two. to move those dumbbells much Three. further than any of the Four. other competitors. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Charlie van der Bosch tells him to take a rest. You're not the referee. 30 seconds. Still 30 seconds to go. 15. 14. 15. 16. 17. 18. Another rest and he still needs two to go ahead of Adrian Smith. And 18. he hasn't locked out. 18. 18 left. There's nothing left. 18 the total for Ted Vandenpara. And if those weights look comparatively small, just remember he's just lifted the equivalent of a 14 and a half stone man 18 times above his head. Whistle start. 
Tell me when you're ready. Bill Kazimier now for the United States with the advantage of knowing exactly what he has to do. One, two, three, four, five. Jeff Lock Capes penalizing Casimir, a bit worried that eight, he's not locking out. Nine, ten, but injury seven, prevents that 12, left arm 13, locking totally. 14, 15, and now the referee's satisfied. Casimir going for speed. 19, 20, 21, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27, 28, 29. 30. And Casimir punches his way into the lead. Put the weights back on. 30. How long? 15 seconds left. Well, he's already won the competition, but he's coming back just to rub it in. 31. 32. 33. 34. 35. Makes 35 just as the hooter goes. The mighty American three times the world's strongest man taking it for the USA. So on day two, the Americans so far carrying all before them, and that gives them a commanding lead, 10 points in the overall placing. Welcome back. Well, our third event in today's program, another individual event for the other half of the teams, and no matter how hard I pull on this rope, I haven't a chance of moving it. In fact, I'd need all of Jeff Capes' help with me. Jeff, explain what's stopping us. Well, what's happening, you've got 300 pounds in the wheelbarrow. That's, right. that's rule one. And you have to pull it on a pulley system where there's a pulley wheel at the top, down to a pulley wheel at the bottom, and then to you as the puller. And the object is you pull hand over hand, and eventually, or hopefully, the weight in the wheelbarrow will rise and the white mark on the rope will come down and pass this white mark on the bottom and the event will cease. It's a timed event. So there are three lifts and the weight in the barrow increases each time. We start with the weight at 320 pounds. First to go, first round, Europe, Charlie Van den Bosch. Tell me when you're ready, timekeeper. Are you ready? And the giant Dutchman having problems in getting that wheelbarrow moving, but now he's off and away. Two. Van den Bosch not pleased with himself. Brian Bell now for Great Britain. And the Scotsman from Dundee's in trouble. Originally, he was not going to do this event. Had to take it on because of Adrian Smith's injury. Right, hand over hand. Get back, Ryan. Get back. Get back. That's it. That's it. From there. Now, step back. Hand the referee over hand. quite prepared to help all the competitors. Come on. Hand over hand, quick. And Are that's what Brian Bell thinks of that. Odie Wilson next. No problems for the big American. Your own time. Round two, the weight in the barrow has gone up to 370 pounds. Charlie Vandenbosch again. Just do it, that's all, just do it. Legs, legs. You need help, get behind him. Head. Head. How much time, please? Charlie Van der Bosch still has plenty of time, another minute, but he decides it's all too much. A kick in the back to jolt Magnus Magnuson into action. Ready? Ready? 
The Icelandic powerlifting champion bringing all his leg power to bear in this one. A good lift from him. Ready, ready. So effectively, ready. just Magnuson and Odie Wilson left in it. And again, a good lift from the American. Third and final pull on deck at 440 pounds. <laughs> Magnus, Iceland. Helty Arneson with the magic fingers. Magnus Magnusson shakes him off. He knows he must lift this to stand a chance. Odie Wilson is already ahead, well ahead on time. Ready? The weight now, a massive 440 pounds. And Magnuson gives it all he's got, but he's forced to give in. Plenty of time, but he knows he's not going to make it. And that left Odie Wilson, the winner, on time. He couldn't be beaten, so the canny American decided not to take his third lift. Charlie and Brian, not your favorite event, huh? To tell you the truth, it's usually my favorite event. But in the first weight, I was leaning too much forwards. When I pulled, it wouldn't go, so I had to come backwards. And I had a second time anyway in that heat, but the last one, it just it was impossible for me to bring it home. And in that first heat, you actually ripped your hands a bit. Yeah, that yeah, obviously just, made it worse. Uh, yeah, just some skin. But uh, we used to think like that, you know, when you do the Highland Games, your hands are full of tacky do the throwing and uh, you do, do. It's very difficult to actually grasp a rope and go for it again when you've got a sore hand as well. Well, you don't feel the pain. When you're competing, there's so much adrenaline in your system, you don't feel any pain. And Brian, particularly bad luck for you that you had to do the event at all. Yeah, Adrian's quite good at this event. He's been practicing it a lot, and that's the first time I've tried it, as you can see by my performance here. So it's one practice, I think. So maximum points yet again for the Americans. They were beaten by the Icelanders last year, and they've come back this year very determined indeed. Finally today, we're back up on the staves, built last century to move coal so that it could be loaded directly into the big sea-going freighters. Listen, lads, Remember, there's an incline which allowed the coal trucks to roll back to the loading point with nothing but gravity propelling them. This is a relay in which two cars must be hauled on ropes 30 metres up the slope. One team member dons a harness ready to tow the second car, but at the other end of the course, ready for a static pull, using his arm and back strength, is his teammate, who starts. You ready? Are you ready? Charlie Vandenbosch getting a good long haul on the rope, getting a narrow lead over Odie Wilson. Just that vital half second difference, and Ted Vandenpatter getting away from Bill Casemeyer. And the seven foot Belgian reaches out and just makes the line ahead of the American. Ted Vandenpara very quickly up and into the running position. And that's quite a feat because the Skoda car is filled with five adults plus 400 pounds of luggage. Ted, Charlie, drawn with the Americans, getting in front of them, that must have been satisfying. Yes, well, it's the, we have two more days to go, so uh, we needed this victory. Really, we did, so uh, we know we can beat them. You got off to a very good pull there yeah well last year we won this event you see and uh, pulling vehicles like that is one of my specialities so gave my, my partner a nice lead and he finished it off bravely 
And Ted, <laughs> once you got the car moving, you were really getting up quite some speed. Yes, when you have long legs, then you can make a lot of speed. Keep your eye on me. In heat two, it's Iceland up against Great Britain. All four men are lighter than the first two teams, but this is an event which requires explosive power, and they both fancy their chances. Okay, other teams ready? Iceland? Great Britain? Are you ready? It's Brian Bell for Great Britain and Magnus Magnusson for Iceland. Magnus Magnusson establishing an impressive rhythm. And Brian Bell going well too. Less than a second in it. Both men running. And less than 13 seconds the time for the 30 meter course. Adrian Smith desperately trying to catch Helti Arneson, but just beaten by the Icelander. Our strong points are like this. We are very strong, both of us, very quick. We are quite equal. In the plan, Magnus has been a, it's a little lighter on me, so he's used to do the running, but because he twists something in his ankle, uh, we had to change. You switch round. Yeah, then we, ca we can't afford to switch around, because we are quite good in everything. Yeah, Magnus, you seem to be pulling hand over hand there like a madman. I am a madman. <laughs> <laughs> so an important win for Iceland, taking six points over the USA who came last. The Americans, though, in the lead, but the gap now between them and Iceland down to six points. So a day which began brilliantly for the mighty Americans, going slightly wrong at the end, and the Icelanders coming right back at them. You can see how with different events, it all changes round completely, and we're only halfway through the competition, so make sure you do... Hello once again from the Gateshead Garden Festival and our last visit to the World Strength Athlete Championship. Now we've got some of the biggest, strongest men in the world in this competition, but when you see them all together, you sometimes lose perspective. To try and give you one, I'm just under six feet tall, I weigh 190 pounds. That's much bigger than average, but I feel absolutely dwarfed next to these fellows. Guys, introduce yourselves and tell them what height you are. Yeah. I'm Ted van der Parre. My height is seven feet, my weight is 340 pounds. I'm O.G. Wilson, my height is 6'6", six, six, and my weight is 404 pounds. Well, they're the biggest, but now let's go and meet uh, their teammates and their opponents. The Great Britain team, Adrian Smith, 26 years old, world brick lift record holder. Brian Bell with him, the youngest man in the competition, European junior powerlifting champion. Iceland, who won the competition last year, and Helti Arneson, 25 years old, with Magnus Magnusson, 27, and the Icelandic powerlifting champion. The giant Charlie van der Bosch from the Netherlands for Europe, 6 feet 4, but even he's dwarfed by Ted van den Parra at 7 feet. Bill Kazemeyer, the oldest man in the competition, but also the most experienced, and with him, the nightmare, Odie Wilson. Well, once again, we begin with a team event, both team members being required to work in harmony. 
With me, Jeff Capes, the man who's been setting the courses and refereeing the events. Jeff, this one a bit of a first. Explain it for us. Slightly. In the past, obviously, some of the strongman events where there's individuals concerned, they have just to roll the car over once and run past the line. This is a first where they've got to roll the car probably up to five times, end over end, until they cross the line at the finish. And with two of them, really some technique, they've got to evolve a, a scheme that's going to work, haven't they? Well, again, in the past, it's always been an individual, but this <laughs> event is all about teamwork. They've got to watch each other, pull together, roll over, again, pull together. And if there's any individual work, i.e. one pulling harder than the other, the car can spin and go out of direction. So they've got to control the car as well as pull together over the course. Well, because it's new and therefore unknown, all the teams have been talking tactics. Quick feet, good moves, find the handle. Doesn't matter where you grab it. If you want to grab low, take whatever you want. But I'm going to be real fast, and I'm going to take the little ones, keep it moving. Okay. If you get that big pull, you take it and use it, and we'll spin that thing right from the start. All right. All right. Well, just, just got to remember, the tire will spin. It's not stable, so don't ever grab it by the tire. Uh, I think... We'll, we've decided to, to pick the car up by the wheels, by the tyres, um, and then if it spins off centre, we'll wait till it lands on the roof, we'll square up and then turn it again. So um, I think we've got quite a good strategy for this. First two teams to go, Europe and Great Britain. And the Europeans, despite their size, soon finding that you've got to lift that car, not push it. The Brits in similar trouble. Turn it, Adrian. They've also got the problem of going off course. Turn it. You must get it back on course. Turn it off. Brian Bell on the near side using everything he's got but the big Europeans first over the line and their time 48.8 yes well the wheel technique didn't really work for the British team did it but they're there at last yes and their time 61.7 I told you it'll go off course Charlie and Ted that one really seemed to go pretty well Ted, you've got a lot of power in there early on, got the car moving well straight away. Yeah, you want to be as quick as possible, you know, to call you turn it over and over and over again. But uh, it's on the uh, halfway, the deck, the top of the car splashed. So it gave a bit of difficulty, but it went for, uh, for the rest all right. Once the roof started to collapse, it was more difficult, was it? Yes, uh, in the start you could see we rolled it and rolled it. But I, was, I was pretty sure we would have been here in 20 seconds, but then the roof went. So that was suddenly uh, completely different. But we managed. I'm uh, happy with the time. Ready! Well, this is the crunch heat. The Icelanders and the Americans tied first overall with 96 points. So today, the winners on the day will be the winners of the competition. Direct Both teams directed. having problems, but the Americans have got their car moving now. Tremendous power they have, that body weight. They are able to push the car end over end. The Icelanders in all sorts of trouble. They just can't keep their car straight. And again, and again! And the Americans are there. They've won this one, 36.5 yes. seconds. Keep coming! Now, can the Icelanders take second? They've got to be 48.8. And they're stuck a little bit at the moment. OD sportingly moves the American car out of the way, but yes. it's the Icelanders' fault because they went offline. Odi, another tough event. Yeah, yeah. I gotta see my insurance adjuster about this car. I don't know what you're gonna say, but it's a mess. <laughs> Everybody seemed to find it easier, in fact, until the roof started collapsing. Huh? Well, that's it. You know, if it stays high on top as you're rolling it over the top, you're all right. But as soon as that gets flat, then you gotta push harder to get it to keep rolling. I think we did better than anybody else, keeping the thing moving over the top once it was back on its wheels for another pop. I saw when we finished, our car was blocking health of them car, and, they, and my, I wouldn't try to be heroic in them, but I just wanted to get it out of the way so they could have a good time too, you know, so we really like going against our slammers. They're tough. <laughs> Healthy Magnus, you're leaning against the car as if you 
quite fond of it, but you looked no. as if you hated it as you, you came down the course. You hated it. <laughs> well, this was supposed to be a good event, you know, fast power event, but something went wrong. So the car was always going in the wrong direction, and we lost too much time with uh, putting it to going in uh, the right direction. But the competition is not over yet. We have many good events coming up, and we will fight until the end, like wild animals. Iceland's time, 49.9, and that put them just behind Europe. And the USA, therefore, take a four-point lead. There, OK, yeah. Safety reason. Once again, an individual event now. Those three strength stones you can All see there with the rings in them the weigh step. over 300 pounds each. The event's simple. Get ready, they have to be taken to Time the top people. of that five-step staircase. First to go, it's Adrian Smith of Great Britain. Are you ready? Yeah. Come on, Adrian. Adrian Smith has this damaged left bicep. It's a problem for him, but he's managed that first one really well. That's where he's hampered. Every time he has to bend that left arm, that's when the bicep muscle really comes into play. Brian Bell urging him on. One. Dig in, Ike. Come on, dig in. Two. Yes, Adi. Vote it, Frank. Come on, vote it now. That's it, Adi. Don't beat him. Come on. Vote it, Adi. Vote it. Come on. The former rugby player from Corby in Northamptonshire finishes in 54 seconds. Seemed to go very well for you, only just one little stumble below the bottom step. Yeah, the, the second stone seems slightly bigger. And I've taken all the skin off from the insides of my legs, and I've taken some more skin off my knuckles. It's proven to be quite um, dodgy, even, even more dodgy than rugby. Ted van der Parra from Europe, second to go, and lifting very smoothly indeed. Using all that height just straightens out those long legs, and he's up another step. This is the stone Adrian Smith found difficulty with. As always, Charlie loud with the encouragement. And he's there, 37.00. And Helti Arneson knows ready, that a great deal depends on him here. Ready. The Icelanders leveled before the start of today's competition. Now four points behind the Americans. Left. Yo. A good first lift. Here's the troublesome one. Good time so far. Oh, man. And now he's struggling neck and neck with Ted van den Parra. And that little catch there could have cost him it. The time, 37.6. Just 0.6 of a second behind Ted van den Parra. Last to go, the giant O.D. Wilson. His legs strapped up Next to, to go. prevent the sort of abrasions that Adrian Smith received. 37 seconds to beat. Oh, and that's a tremendous lift. Odie Wilson missing out one step completely on that first lift. Bill Casimir, quick with the encouragement. Get it up. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Quick. Up. Step. Come on. Up. And Odie yeah. Wilson looks up. as if he's going to yeah. win this one for the Americans. Oh. Whoa, yeah. Yes, Get he has. 33.9. Okay. okay. And what a gamble. Oh. He took on that first lift, but it came off. You figure a lot of these guys are extremely fast, especially the Icelanders. Hey, and the guys from 
Germany extremely fast, so I got a lot of power. So I figured if I could just take one of his steps away, that'll save me a few seconds and just go for it on the last one. Yep. So another first place for the USA and Iceland having to settle for third. The gap now, eight points between the USA and Iceland, Europe and Great Britain effectively out of it. Just two events to go. The Americans the favorites, but Iceland could still do it if they were to win the barrel run and the lorry harness race. Join us to see the finale after the break. On Eurosport. Welcome Nikita of South Africa defends his IBF Super Bantamweight crown against Jose Sugar Baby Rocas of Colombia. Will the neat boxing Nikita overcome the crafty Colombian? Nikita takes on Rocas on ringside boxing, Saturday night at 9, 8 UK on Eurosport. Welcome back. Well, we're on to our last individual event, and it's another explosive one, designed really to test who'd make the best Drayman. There are eight barrels here. They each weigh 50 kilos, and the competitors have to pick them up, run the eight meters to the platform, which is one meter, 10 centimeters high, and hurl the barrels onto the platform, then return and pick up another one. It's against the clock, and the fastest man wins. First run, USA, Bill Kazmaier. Are you ready? And this, one of Bill Kazmaier's favorite events. Come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. Hit it. That Hit tremendous it. upper body strength allowing him to hurl these early on, barrels from four or five feet away from the platform. Come on. Hit it. Hit it. Four down already. Come on, Bill. Come on. Come on, Bill. Come on. There we go, Bill. Boom, boom. Now it's beginning to tell. A little more effort went into that one. Suck it up, suck it up. Suck it up. Go, suck it up. Come on. Come on, come on. Right here, let's go, let's go, Bill. Now he's beginning to come blow on. as well to make it more come difficult. Boom, boom, boom. Desperately wants to win this one. Come on. Beaten by Magnus Magnuson last come year. Go. All right. Yes. Tremendous time, 50.8. And look at the power of Bill Kazmaier. Next to go, Charlie Van den Bosch, Europe. Are you ready? <laughs> the big Dutchman, ideally built for this event. Again, able to hurl the barrel, but not perhaps quite as smoothly as Bill Kazmaier. It's very good so far. Just two barrels left after this one. And I think he's just slower than Kazmaier at this point. Yes, he's not going to beat him. And struggles with that last one. 53.6. Good, but not good enough. Uh, I had a really nice run, no problems really, but yeah, the old man still beat me, unfortunately, but there will be a time, there will be a day I beat. <sighs> Ready! Brian Bell from Great Britain, third to go. Much lighter man and a much younger man. So he's got the speed, but not the strength. And you can see what that means. He has to go right up to the platform. He really has to take probably two paces more than Bill Kazemeyer and Charlie van der Bosch. Come on, 
So even though he might be faster across the ground, he's covering more, and he's slower than those two at this point. But this is where the crunch really comes. And just like the others, he's struggling with those last two barrels. He's already slower than Kazmaier, slower than Charlie van der Bosch too. A good run, but Brian Bell finishes in 58.4. Here's where it really started to hurt. Look how he's blowing. Next to go, Magnussen, Iceland. Are you ready? And tremendous responsibility on the broad shoulders of Magnus Magnussen. He knows that he has to win this if Iceland are to stay in the hunt at all. Set off at a tremendous pace. He won this event last year. And Kelty Arneson has the stopwatch in his hand. He's keeping him absolutely up to the second on everything. A tremendous run. Just the two to go. Again, fatigue sets in. It's going to be very tight. Remember, 50.8 he's got a beat, and he's done it, 49.6. I needed to be fast because Bill was fast. Uh, I beat Bill last year, so I knew he would be after the revenge now. But I did it again. You were well ahead of the clock halfway through, but then the tiredness seems to really come in. Is that yeah. how it works? Yes. Uh, last maybe three barrels. It get heavier all the time you know, <laughs> when you get tired. But I was going for it. No way, I was going let in. So I'm happy about it. So Iceland taking maximum points to keep themselves in with a chance of victory. And for our last event, back to the staves, and we've got a harness pull on the big trucks. The seven and a half ton trucks have to be hauled over a 30 meter course up Tell the incline, along mark. the staves. First to go, Europe against Great Britain. <laughs> These two teams now really pulling for pride rather than prizes. Europe safe in third place and the British team in fourth. Remember, the Brits won the car pull, but these seven and a half ton trucks are very different matter. Nevertheless, they've got it moving and ahead of the big Europeans at the moment. Brian Bell really coming into his own on these leg power events. And Britain first, much to his delight. You know, Brian's a very good puller. And uh, he just, uh, he was like the captain on the way up and told me what to do. Well, the secret is when you're pulling a truck on the flat surface, start off short, explosive steps, using the hands. Then you get up into a hanging position. And they both look great as a team because they're both similar builds and height. We gave away maybe seven stone, but we worked together as the team. And that's what counts on this event. Helty Arneson psyching himself up. He knows exactly what's got to happen. He and Magnus Magnusson must beat the time of 41 seconds exactly set by the Brits. And he wants the Americans slower than 42.4 if they're going to tie the scores at the end of these 16 events in this year's championship. And these big trucks are very different kettle of fish to the cars. The extra body weight of the Americans already telling. And the Icelanders struggling to get the big of eco truck moving. Odie Wilson charging away. And knowing now that they've got the championship in the bag. And by way of celebration, Odie Wilson cheers in their major opponents. The Icelanders have pushed them all the way, but they're now just about spent at the end of this grueling event. 
Well done. Eventually, for all their speed, the difference in body weight defeating them. A very emphatic victory. Once you got it moving, you were almost getting into a run. That's the key, you know. When you got body weight such as ours, both our legs are pretty powerful. So once we got the truck going, Bill used a good strategy. He stayed low. I came up a little bit, but I kept my arms around him. So we could kind of like get in the same drive, and we just kept going. I could have ran forever with the truck, not, not by myself. <laughs> Another good victory, though, Kaz. Yeah, not enjoying bad, you know. this one. Yeah, four big pistons just pounding away on the turf. Oh, we made it fun, you know. Too bad for the Icelanders. I don't know if they finished or not, but uh, it's a pretty tough course. A lot of the guys are really banged up, yeah. and after three days of grueling events, the body just takes a toll, and and all these injuries add up. Before you know it, you can't walk the next day. I have been lucky through the years. I have never got serious injuries or anything. But I think last year we won. We shocked the vault of strength and power by winning because we were kind of little names coming up and we have lost the title now but uh, it just brings back the will to train and to win again maybe we were needed to be taken down a little so we just know we have to work harder for next year and just hope they will put more like even through petos better than this year but anyway the americans they were the best this year they were on the bulls it's a bomb Peter Bulland. We just have to take second place. So there it is, the USA winning the final event. Iceland having to settle for fourth, and that gave the USA victory by a clear 12 points. Everybody agrees. Worthy winners and Alan Palmer, the marketing director of the sponsors, Trebo Bassett Limited, presents them with the Trebo Super Strength Trophy. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> If your kids out there watching, teamwork. <laughs>